that's what the 148 little strips glued together looks like. The big part in the bottom here, that's going to be 1.6 by 1.6, the tabletop. The four small ones is the legs for the two benches that we're going to make. And every year and there you'll see some black marks. That's not holes that are filled with black resin. And uh, I used wood cast, clear cast resin from AMT Composites to fill that. And we'll sand and finish that later. So guys, what I've done is I've cut strips, poplar, 45 millimeters wide. Then turned them all on side, glued them together into panels. There's four pieces here in the bottom. And the reason why I made them four pieces, this is 410 millimeters wide about to fit through my thicknesser. So then from 45 millimeters, I've taken it down to 40 millimeters for a final thickness. And now I need to glue them together. This four for the top first. I'm going to glue two together and then the other two together. And then a final, I glue these two big pieces together last. And then we'll square it up. For those that wondering why I didn't fill this knot hole, this board is going to be cut off somewhere around here. It's only need to be 1.6 meters. So I didn't waste the resin there. The benches, that's the tops, that's the legs. We're going to miter them, 45s on both sides, and then connect them with dominoes. So let me get them glued up and see what they look like. So guys, I quickly changed the bit on my domino to an 8mm because I'm going to use an 8x50 domino to connect these with. I want the extra length for that, so that's why I'm going for the 50mm. And uh, now we can quickly set the domino up and get this done. Of course, the domino works very nice with proper dust collection. I'm going to cut my one side of the board on a tight cut and then on the second side of the board I'll do on a loose cut. So let me set the height quickly. I'm just going to set it to the board thickness of 40 millimeters and that's now done. Let's get this cut. So guys, I went ahead with a few steps. The top was now glued together and I squared it up. So this is going to be the final size of this top. And uh, what I'm doing now is wherever I cast the resin, I'm just going to surface that quickly with a little router. I'll show you. And then we'll start sanding. Loads and loads of sanding here. And then we'll do the roundovers. The one bench I also assembled. And I have the other bench to assemble. That we'll do a little bit later as well. So let me show you quickly how I surface the worst of the resin off before I start sanding. Guys, I use a little cordless trim router from Bosch and a little board to trim this. The way I do this is I just put the board down, set the bit to the depth, put it down, and then I trim it. Just get it down to a smoother surface so that when I start sanding, I don't have to sand too much there because the resin tends to clog the sandpaper quite fast and because it's harder than the wood, you start getting indentations. So if you can get the worst off, somehow other people use scrapers and stuff. Let me show you how to do it with a router. There you go. So 
race. That's now the worst taken off. And now sanding will be so much easier. Now the sanding starts on this massive piece of top. I'm going to use the Festool Rotex, the dust collection, of course, and the air filter on. So if you don't see me with a dust mask, get over it. Guys, the first half of the table is done, or sanded, with 80 grit. What I'm concentrating on, and I hope you can see this now, you see that, a little bit of a corrugated effect from the planer, and that's what I'm concentrating on, with the 80 grit paper on the machine at the moment. So first we'll take it through the 80s, making sure not to sand one spot for too long. In other words, then keeping the surface nice and flat. So far, it works quite nicely. The glue ups was very, very nice. So, need to get rid of that. I'll have to still do a bit of a top up there on the resin. And uh, but first, let me finish sand with an 80 grit. Then we'll go to the next, whatever 100, 120, and then 150. So, guys, a few hours later. The top is now sanded to 120 grit right through. I did on the corners a little 3 millimeter round over on top. And then I also just sanded a little sample block. To see what the Rubia Monocoat Pure is going to do. So that's the color difference it's going to be. I think it's going to look very nice. So I'm not tired of sanding. So I'm going to continue now assembling the other bench. So guys, to assemble the benches so that it looks like that one, I use the domino again. So I use an 8x50 domino, which is quite a sturdy one, and we're going to domino it on the mitres. So because my stock is nice and thick, in this case 40 millimeters, I can go quite deep on this if you look at that. It's quite a serious tenon. I'm going to put four on each side and this will be very strong. This one, me, my wife and my daughter has been on this one earlier on to check the strength and this is as solid as can be. So let me get this last bench assembled and we can continue sanding. So guys, I've set up my fence to 45 degrees and then the height so that I go closer to the top than the bottom because I don't want to come out on the back side. Now, let's get this done. For the first two cuts, I'm going to use the hooks on the domino itself. In other words, if I put it down and hook it, that will give me my first distance.
Now I'm playing it safe for now, just doing the two outside ones. Then I'll pre-assemble without glue, of course, and mark the two inside dominoes. Don't know what I've done with my pencil. So that's the marks for the inside too. We cut them. Guys, then as you will notice as well, I've done tight dominoes on the bottom and loose dominoes on the top. So that will give me a little bit of leeway to move the board to flush on the ends. Let me get this glued. So guys, a very handy thing to use. I made myself some clamping cowls and clamp each of them with one clamp and I've put sanding paper on the back of them. And then you pull on the 45 and that closes the gap quite nicely and it's nice and 90 degrees so that's now the clamping done both sides is done we'll leave this now for a few hours to dry and we start sanding again so guys that's the top now sanded to 180 grit went through all the grits edges everywhere the bottom I've sanded to 150 grit and then rubioed it. Put the inserts in for the base that you see standing there. So that is done. This is now the top. Took it to 180. Now it's time for the rubio. I made my mix and I'm going to start putting the rubio on. Let's see what that looks like.
Guys, that's a Rubia Monaco done. One coat. I've left it for a few minutes and then wiped it off. And I also have done all the edges. And uh, now we can just leave her. See how she dries. Then I'll see. Maybe I'll give it a quick scuff. It's a Scotch bright pad. And then give it another coat. But let's leave it a few days. See how she ends up. Guys, that's it for this week. Please remember to like and subscribe. Help this channel out. See you next week.